Hello, everybody. It's time to start our first honors pre-calculus lesson. Um, this lesson, we are going to just review a little bit in preparation for continuing on through chapter five in our textbook, um, doing the analytic trigonometry, where we combine trigonom trigonometric um, functions with algebra. OK, so today's lesson, we're going to review um, unit circle values. And then we're going to review um, just basic graphs of trig functions. So it'll be a nice, easy, easy lesson to do this. OK, so um, hopefully you remember um, the trig tour that we first started with. So um, I'm going to show you this. I'll have this link in, um, in Google Classroom for you. And you can access this if you want. It's probably still on your phones. You can look at it if you want. But um, remember, it comes to us um, kind of like this. I'm going to set it to radians. And I'm going to turn on special angles. And then remember, you can fully interact with this. You can drag um, the angle around um, the circle. And you can do multiple revolutions, positive revolutions. Remember, if an angle opens up, it's positive. It opens down from standard position, it's negative. And over here on the side, we see our angles. And they're in radians, of course. Um, remember, we said that on the unit circle, where the terminal side meets the circle, that ordered pair and gives us cosine and sine. And cosine is the x value, and sine is the y value. Tangent is y divided by x. All of that. Um, and then, if you remember how we kind of use special triangles um, with our special angles to find those cosine sine and cosine values. So I'm going to put um, the angle at pi over 6, and I'm going to change it to 30 degrees, um, or just turn it to degrees. And so pi over 6 is 30 degrees. And if you remember the special triangles, um, what we said, if this was, um, if the hypotenuse of this we make a little right triangle here. If this hypotenuse is one unit circle, radius of one, and this is a 30 degree triangle, then um, this is comes from the one, two, square root of three triangle, divide everything by two to get a similar triangle where the radius hypotenuse is one, then this um, side would be one half, and this side would be square root of three over two. And so any triangle, any angle on the unit circle that is 30 degrees um, above or below the horizontal axis, we can use this triangle. And the cosine um, is going to be square root of 3 over 2, positive or negative. Um, sine is going to be 1 half, positive or negative, depending on which quadrant it's in. And we went through all of that um, before spring break. And then let's look at um, a 60 degree triangle. So if this is 60 degrees up here, um, this now is 60 degrees. This is 1 half. This is square root of 3 over 2. And our hypotenuse is 1. The other special triangle that we have is our 45-45 triangle. And um, so that would be here. And it comes from the 1, 1 square root of 2. Divide all the sides by square root of 2 and rationalize. We get our hypotenuse is 1. Um, this leg is, is square root of 2 over 2. And this leg is square root of 2 over 2. Um, and so what we can do is think about those special triangles as uh, we travel around the unit circle um, to find the x and the y value of where the terminal side crosses it. And then if we have a quadrant angle like um, 270 degrees, OK, we change it to radians. That's 3 pi over 2. Um, cosine is the x value, which would be 0. Sine is the y value, which is negative 1. And so when an angle is on a quadrant, it's easy to find the, the ones and the zeros. Um, so. Um, practicing sine, cosine, and tangent around the unit circle is the first thing that you're going to do um, for your review assignments. Um, we did lots of unit circle quizzes, and you guys did great. So this should be 
just getting this back under your fingers since it's been three weeks. Okay, the next thing to review is um, the graphs of these functions. I'm gonna reset this um, and still change it to, to radians, although it doesn't matter, radians are degrees. I'm gonna turn labels on so that we can see the um, x-axis, theta axis um, labeled. And let's start with cosine. And as we open up this angle, I've turned off the special angle so this can be continuous. And we look at what happens to the x values um, of this ordered pair starting at zero. When the angle is zero, the x value is one. Then it goes to zero, down to negative one back to zero and back to one. So you can um, review how cosine works here, how sine, remember sine is the y value. So if we were to start back at zero, um, the y value is zero. And then as the angle increases, angle increases, the y values go from zero to one, back to zero, back to negative one and back to zero. And then remember, of course, these graphs of sine and cosine are periodic, they repeat. And so this pattern, this cycle repeats. Okay, with cosine, cycle that repeats is peak, down to valley, up to peak, um, maximum through the center to the minimum, center, maximum. Um, we'll review all those other words in a minute, okay? So I would suggest playing with this um, to get back familiar with um, these trig functions. Now let's move to um, Desmos. Okay, so here's Desmos. And let's talk a little bit and review just a little bit about um, transformations of sine and cosine. And so I've got a graph f of x equals, and then a sine bx plus c plus d. So remember, a represents amplitude. And so if we drag this, we can see how amplitude changes the, the maximum and minimums. OK, can we review that a little bit? Um, you can play with Desmos too. B represents the number of cycles between zero and two pi. Right now I have B set at one. And if you look um, between zero and two pi, here is one cycle of sine. Um, as B increases, the number of cycles between zero and two pi increases. And then if you kind of play with it and, and animate it, it's kind of fun, so play. Um, and then C, I'm gonna put this back at one. Get it, get it there. C is um, part of phase shift. Phase shift is really um, negative C over B. But right now, if B is one, we can just think of phase shift as the opposite of C over one. And of course, if C is positive, then the graph is gonna shift to the left. And if C is negative, the graph shifts to the right. Get it back at zero. And then D is a vertical shift up and down. And of course, if D is positive, it shifts up. And negative, it shifts down. And then of course, the same thing works for cosine. So you could um, shift them all up and do that. OK? So that's a really quick review of, of sine and cosine. Let's go back to um, the trig tour and think about tangent really fast, okay? So remember tangent is y divided by x and um, tangent has lots of asymptotes where tangent's undefined. And if you think about the places that tangent is undefined, it's gonna be um, like we're in radians here. Let's do some special angles, um, whoops. Um, special angles here. The tangent of, of pi over two, actually I've got too many angles going here, let me back up a little bit, get back to here. Pi over two 
um, we say it's undefined. Um, this trig tour uses plus or minus infinity um, to kind of say that the graph is going towards there. It's really actually undefined there. Um, and so uh, this is the graph of tangent as, and we'll let you review that a little bit. We'll go over tangent a little bit more later on, but you can play with that a little bit. Okay. Um, so, uh, so this lesson was really short. Um, all I wanted you to do was to be able to um, get your unit circle values back under your fingers and review a little bit about um, sine and cosine, a little bit about tangent, um, what those graphs look like. And we're going to use all of that in um, the next lesson. We're going to start section 5.3. Um, your homework tonight um, is going to be to play two quiz is games. And I'll have them, um, I'll assign them to your class. And so if you have the app on your phone, they will show up there. Um, as an assignment, you will probably even get a notification for that. And I'll put um, the information for that in Google Classroom. You can play those games as many as many times as you want. They won't be very long. Um, and then try to go for perfection. Try, try to get um, to where you can play the games and get a perfect score. And um, there you go. So let me look at something really quick. Get used to our schedule. So you need to have those games played and um, kind of perfected by Tuesday at one o'clock and that's when I'll see you. So have a great day and see you at one o'clock on Tuesday.